everyone. Welcome to Church Online today. We are so glad you decided to jump on and join us. Whether you are watching on our website, TV apps, Facebook Live, or YouTube, we want to encourage you to make the most out of watching online today. So here are a few tips on how to do just that. Okay, first, church is always better together. So grab any other people in your house. I mean, roommates, parents, kids, you can watch it together. It's so much better that way. If there is no one around, you could FaceTime or call someone else who is watching it and you can virtually sit together. This is just one way to stay in community with others. More on that to come. Okay, second, interact with the message. If you hear something you like, say amen, take notes, participate like you normally would. Even discuss it after with people who also watched it. There will also be a time in the service to worship with your giving and ways to let us know how we can pray and care for you. Okay, so service will start in just a few minutes. So now is the time to gather your family, turn up the volume, grab your coffee, and get ready for church. We'll see you soon. Life can bring us storms. Those moments where we wander, wonder, doubt. The journey doesn't stop, but the progress does. It can be lonely, painful. Sometimes we try to stare it down as if we could somehow will it to go away or we think we can go toe to toe and come out the other side, unscathed. We often forget just how small we are. The truth is, storms are inevitable, but when they appear, we have a protector, a savior who knows a thing or two about calming storms. A God who is a stronghold in times of trouble. In our weakness, He is strong. In our fear, He is courage. In our desperation, He is peace. Yes, storms are inevitable. But our God is invincible. I'm excited for this word today. And this word was kind of birthed out of a phone call. Last week, no, it wasn't last week because today is Sunday. I believe it was either, no, it was Monday. On Monday, we got a phone call from a dear friend of ours who uh, prays for our lives, prays for our children, prays for our church. Um, They're very well connected to us because Uh, They're also the godparents to um, some of our children. And she called and she said, her name is Anissa, and we love her dearly. And she called and she said, you know, you were just on my mind, and I wanted to pray for you. So I grabbed my wife. We went in the room. We put the phone on the speakerphone, and she began to pray. And she was praying a lot of things that were on point and a lot of things that we knew was directly from God. But in the midst of her praying, she said a phrase that I couldn't shake. She said a phrase that after she said it, I kept hearing it. It was reverberating in my heart over and over again. So I knew it was something that God wanted me to uh, look at further and look into further. So I began to dive into his word to find out that phrase that she said, how it had application to whether it was to just my life or to my family or to uh, our church family. And as I began to read it and study it out more, the Lord began to say, Jason, this is what I want you to talk about, and I want you to share it with the church family. So Christian Faith, today I want to talk to you about a message that's entitled, I Still Believe God. Somebody say, I Still Believe God. Oh, come on, y'all, on this side. Say, I still believe God. I still believe 
on this side, on this, this side right here, shout, I still believe God. And, 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 and interesting enough, it sometimes it's hard to say that when you are experiencing setbacks and when you are experiencing things that make you doubt or question God's ability and his place and his uh, efficiency within your life. But I'm going to help us today from God's word to remind us and to put us into a place of knowing that we still need to believe God. Amen? Go with me in your Bible to Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 7th verse. Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the 7th verse. And I want to introduce you uh, to this character in the Bible you may not be aware of. It says here in Hebrews 11 and 7, By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, Moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household. And we're going to stop there, but I'm going to read it again. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his household. This guy here named Noah, if you've been in church or in Christendom for any period of time, you are familiar with the biblical character of Noah. There have been plenty of movies made about him. Russell Crowe even started a movie about five years ago uh, about Noah. But Noah, this biblical figure, this historical figure, you can find his story in Genesis, the sixth chapter through the ninth chapter. So when you have time, please go there later on and read that and dive into it. But for the sake of time, I'm going to kind of just talk to you about some things real quick. Noah was a guy that loved God. And Noah was minding his own business. And Noah was raising his sons. He was taking care of himself, his wife, and his children. But somewhere along the line, the timeline of his life, God comes to him and tells him, Noah, I want you to build an ark. And I want you to do it because it's getting ready to rain. Now, for us in present day, that'd be no big deal. That, that understanding, that terminology would be no big deal. An ark would be a huge boat. It'd be the size of the Titanic. That's nothing shocking there. So, God, you want me to go build a, a boat. No big deal. But for God to then tell Noah, I want you to build this boat that has never been built before. It has never been seen before. This type of edifice, this type of structure had never been constructed before. Why? Because there was no need for a boat. Why? Because there had never been rain that fell from the sky. Up until that time, if you read in Genesis, it tells you that there would be a mist that would come up from the ground, and that mist would water all the plants and vegetation, and would create water to be in the different lakes and streams and, and oceans and things of that nature. Up to that point, there was never water that had come from the sky. So God is telling Noah, I want you to build something <coughs> that has never been built to prepare for something that has never happened. Are y'all still with me? Noah had to believe God in a, various, in a very serious way in order for him to build something that's never been built so that he can be prepared to experience something that has never happened before in your life. See, having to believe God, see, see saying that you believe God is not really fully whole until you actually do something with the belief that you said that you have. Are you still with me? I can say all the time, I love my wife, and I believe that I love my wife, and I believe my wife loves me, and I can have that belief. But that belief is shown to her not just in what I say, but how I connect my actions to what I say. Because for a lot of us, we are really good at saying one thing that doesn't translate into something else. Are y'all here? 
we can say one thing. For example, we can say stuff like, hey, this year I'm going to lose 20 pounds. Y'all got quiet. The issue is, are you going to put action behind that, uh, 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 that statement so that you can get to a place of actualizing the thing that you said you believed in? Are y'all still with me? And there's a lot of times that we are saying certain things about God, and we are saying we believe God, but our actions do not reflect the belief that we have. You have to do something like this in order to believe God, to show God that you believe him. You have to be willing to hear what he's saying and to respond to what he's saying. Your belief in God is not found on Sunday morning. Your belief for God is found in how you act and respond Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Your belief in God is not in how you respond here, but your belief in God is found in how you respond with your family, how you respond with your coworkers, how you respond with ignorant people you bump into at the store, how you respond to people that may not have your political view or your view of the earth. How do you respond to those things? Because your actions, your response, how you live is the true reflection of what you believe. Are y'all still here? Now, I, let, let, let me show you, because I, I want you to know that Noah believed God. In, in order to believe God, it doesn't just happen. You can't just be like, well, I believe God. No, there, there's something that has to take place in your life and in your heart that helps to develop that belief. Are y'all still with me? Go with me to Genesis, the sixth chapter, the eighth through the ninth verse. I want to show you from God's word. God's description of Noah so you can see how he had this type of belief and how you'll be able to see that the belief that Noah had in God is not something that's reserved for special people. It's only reserved for people that respond. Are y'all still with me? Watch. It says here, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Stop. So when God looked down from heaven and he sees Noah, God gives Noah grace. Noah finds grace in God's eyesight. But why? I don't know about you, but when God looks at me, I want to smile to hit his face. And I want him to say, that young man, that good looking brother, I, I, I had to throw that in there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to add grace to his life. I'm going to be graceful to him. I'm going to show him great things. But that doesn't, just, that doesn't come just because God looks down at you. That is a response that God gives to you because of a response that you had to him first. Are y'all here? So let's see what did Noah do to cause him to get that type of response from God, that God would say of Noah that you have found grace in my sight. says in the next scripture, this is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. And here's the, the, the biggest point. Noah walked with God. Do y'all see that? Is it in your Bible? Noah walked with God. When you walk with God, he looks at you with grace and with favor. How do I walk with God? Well, let me show you this. Noah's belief in God was shaped because he walked with God. Now, does this mean that Noah was literally walking and Noah saw God walking next to him, so they took a stroll every morning on the way to get coffee? No, that's not what that means. What this means, and it's described in the previous scripture, Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. In other words, Noah was a man that said, I want to follow righteousness as close as possible. I want my life to be pleasing with God. I want to follow the things that God has in place that is designed to enrich and to help and to benefit my life. Noah made a decision that I'm going to live a life that pleases God. When you make that type of decision, that type of declaration, that is a walk that's with God. 
Because what you're saying is, God, if you go this way, then I'm walking with you. Wherever you go, I'm walking with you. Wherever your word takes me, I'm walking with you. Whatever you say, I'm walking with you. That is a person that is walking with God. And the problem that we have today is that we have a lot of people that know where God is, but that are not willing to walk with him where he's going. It got quiet in here. God, you said if, if somebody do something wrong to me, that I'm to bless them and to not curse them. Well, God, I know what you said, but I don't feel like walking with you to bless them. I'm going to walk my own way because I want to cuss them. Are y'all still with me? Okay, God. Uh, God, you told me if somebody is in need of something and they take something from me, that I'm to find them and not just give them my cloak, but give them my coat too. If they steal my scarf, I'm going to find them and then give them my coat too. That's walking with God. God, I'm going to walk in syncopation and in rhythm with your word because I want to be righteous. I want to be in the correct uh, 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 status and place and relationship with you. So I'm going to walk with you. Noah was a man that walked with God. And because he walked with God, his walk with God shaped his belief. You don't have to tell me what you believe. I know what you believe based upon who you walk with. Are you still here? Because watch this. What we believe is shaped by who we have been walking with. So you got to ask yourself, do I believe God or don't? And if I don't, why don't I believe God? Who is it or what is it that I'm walking with that is causing me to doubt the God that I once loved and believed? We, we are in difficult times, and we are inundated with, with, with a spiritual warfare of, of information. We are inundated with a psychological warfare because every time you hit television, it's a report of numbers and bad news and negative things that are going on. And if you only walk with that, you only listen to that, you only respond to that, that will shape what you believe. And you'll start saying things like, this ain't going to ever get better. This ain't going to ever turn around. The world is coming to an end. There is no hope. I might as well throw in the towel. That, that's, that's what you believe. That's what you say because that's what you believe because that's what you've been walking with. But for me, I'm not walking with that. I'm walking. I got news, but I want the good news. What is God saying about this? And what God is saying about this is, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall not fear. Why? Because God, you're with me. I may have to walk through a COVID season, but the proof is in the jelly. I'm getting through this. Though 10,000 fall to my right and another few thousand fall to my left, it won't come nigh to me. Why? Because that's what I believe, and that's what I'm walking with. I'm walking with what God is saying, so therefore it shapes what I believe. If you hang around a bunch of negative people who don't know your God and who don't love your God and who do not serve your God and you continue to walk with them, it's going to shape how you believe your God. Are you here? I want to be at a place to where my belief in God is so strong that my belief and my walk shapes and impacts other people that are around me. I'm hoping that every Sunday when you come here and every Sunday that you're listening to this word wherever you are, that this is a source and a moment of strength and encouragement because I'm walking with God and I'm coming to you with what God has shared with me throughout the week. I'm not giving you bad news of what the world is saying. I'm letting you know weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. I'm letting you know no matter who is elected, the Bible says we got a responsibility to pray for the, y'all got quiet, but I'm going to tell you what the book 
says, because that's who I'm walking with. We got a responsibility to vote, and when we get done voting, we got to pray. Pray that God's will is done. Pray that God's will is accomplished. Pray that whoever is in the seat of judgment and whoever is in the seat of executing decisions, that the Bible says, God, you hold their heart in your hand. So there's no need of me cussing and fussing at the heart. Let me pray for the God that holds the heart. That's, y'all, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. That's, that's what I believe. So it doesn't matter how dark it may get out there because they're saying over here, it's dark. Things are bad. Buy your guns. Get your ammo. And I'm not telling you to do or don't do that. But what I am saying is this. I'm not worried about how dark it is because the Bible tells me that I'm a lamp that's set on the heat. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And this light cannot be put up. The Bible tells me that the light, the Bible don't say this, but this is the proof. Light shines the brightest when things are the darkest. So for me, it's a moment in this season for God's people to arise, for the church of the living God to arise, for God's people to stand up in this moment and for it to be a witness and a testimony of the miracle working power of God. It ain't over till God says it's over and the back the Bible hasn't told me that it's over yet. There's still a revival that's coming. There's still millions of souls, y'all got quiet, that gotta be saved. It ain't over. Lift your hands, oh ye gates, and be ye lifted up. Are y'all here today? I don't know who or what you're walking with, but I walk with God, and because I walk with God, I still believe God. Are y'all here today? I still believe him. I, I still believe him. Let's, let's, let's go back to Noah because I got, I got off right there. That got good to me. Because y'all was looking at me real hard like y'all didn't know what I was talking about. But I still believe God. But this, 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 this Bible is telling us about Noah that because he walked with God, this walk shaped his faith. And this faith shaped his belief, and he continued to believe God. Noah's belief caused him to obey God and to build an ark. Again, you got to have some strong type of faith for people to walk by your house and say, Hey, Noah, what you doing? And you're saying, Well, I'm building a structure you've never seen for an event that's coming that we've never experienced because I heard from a God you ain't never saw. This this is what Noah has to say over and over again, and I'm sure, I'm, I'm positive that Noah was the talk of the town at the local coffee shop. I'm sure when they sat down to drink the, uh, the coffee from the hills, and they began drinking the coffee, looking at each other, and they were like, hey, th- th- What's wrong with Noah? Has, has Noah lost his mind? He, he over there talking about he going to build something we ain't never seen for an event that has never happened because he talked to a God we ain't never saw. I don't know about you, but I think Noah's a little, whoo I'm sure this was the talk of the town, and it spread from one person to the next and from one person to the next, and it continued to spread all over. And Noah, the Bible says that he did not have any help from other people because the Bible says that he, Noah, and his family built the ark. You got to be in a place of belief that you're able to still believe God in the face of affliction, in the face of laughter. In the face of people and your surroundings that are saying the opposite of what you believe. Are you here? The surroundings of Noah were saying, why would rain ever come from the sky? It never has. Noah, they don't even look like there's any clouds in the sky. It's just sunshine. Noah, you're building something we ain't never seen before. It doesn't make any sense. But the Bible says... Back in Hebrews eleven seven, 7, I want you to see this real quick. The Bible says concerning Noah, by faith, Noah being divinely warned of things not yet seen, it says he moved with godly fear. What does that mean? Is that it means that he moved with great reverence. How 
can he reverence God? He reverences God because he walks with God. You reverence the person that you spend time with. Reverence means to respect and to have an awe concerning. And because Noah walked with God, he had an awe. He had a respect. He had a reverence. He had a godly fear for God. And that awe and respect and reverence caused Noah to keep building. I want you to watch this. The Bible says, if you go back and read it, that God declares, because of what's going on with man, in 120 years, I'm going to flush the earth with water because I'm sick of this foolishness. God said that 120 years before he did it. If you follow the timeline of Noah, Noah has sons around 500. He begins building the ark, and you do all the math that's needed, and just trust me when I'm saying it, it is said to us that the average time that it took Noah and his family to build the ark was 75 years. Are you still with me? Noah worked on something for 75 years. I'm going to say it again. Noah believed God and then would still have to keep still believing God in the face of criticism, in the face of laughter, in the face of signs that looked like what he said was never going to happen. And he had to keep pushing through that for 75 years. For 75 years, Noah was wrong to everybody that was around him. But you got to get it made up in your mind. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It doesn't matter what other people say, think, or feel about what it is that God told me to walk with. I'm going to walk with this, and I'm going to walk this out no matter how long it takes because one day we're going to wake up, and we're going to see the very thing that God said is the thing that's coming to pass. Are you still here? I want you to know for 75 years, Noah and his sons worked on that ark. Why is this important? Because your family's destiny is tied up in what you believe and how you respond to it. Are you here? Noah may not have been able to convince his neighbors, but he sure made sure that he convinced his family. And his family, because they believed their father, his family was saved from what was coming. Are you here today? So my question to you is this. What will you build during this time with your faith? And the thing that you are building, how will it be in such a way that is going to provide salvation for your family? Will you allow this time of darkness and defeat and, and pessimism to cause you to stop believing God? How, how many of us, when we left out of 2019, God spoke to us about the promises of 2020? Y'all got quiet. And we were moving with 2020. God said this. God's going to do this. God promised me 2020 is a year of vision. Come on, y'all. 2020 is the year God's going to turn it around. 2020 is going to be double blessing. 2020. I don't know what you said, but these are all the things that I said. 2020 I'm going, is a year of promotion. 2020, God's going to give me a blessing. 2020, I'm going to get that house. 2020, I'm going to find that spouse. 2020, and you were excited. Woo, in January, you shouted because it's a new year. God promised me. In February, you was a little exhausted, but you kept shouting. So I'm going to keep my momentum because God going don't do what he says. Then March hit and the pandemic hit. And when that hit, a lot of us forgot what God said because we allowed the surroundings tell us that what God spoke to us couldn't be possible in the midst of what we were experiencing. But I'm here today to let you know you got to have the Noah kind of faith. It does not matter what the environment is saying. I know what God told me. I know what he promised me. I know what he showed me. You can laugh if you want, but I still believe God. You can talk about me if you want, but I still believe God. Woo! I still believe God. Are y'all here today? And this is where you have to get with your life. I'm coming to a close. 
that you got to get to a place to where you're saying, I'm not responsible for what people around me do and do not believe, but I am responsible for what I believe. I believe God still reigns and rules. I believe God is still the God of the universe. I believe that he still sent his son to die on the cross for my sins. And because of that act right now, I'm saved. And because I'm saved, I still believe that I have access to healing. I have access to health. I have access to his power. I have access to his deliverance. I have access to his protection. I have access to his covering. I have access to his anointing. I have access to his grace. I have access to his mercy. I have access that the angels will follow me all the days of my life. I got access that goodness and mercy will follow me. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I still believe God. I know it's dark, but when did he stop being the light? I know it's difficult, but when did he stop saying that he'll make a way out of no way? Woo! Sometimes you got to get in the way. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Sometimes something's got to get in the way for you to see him make a way out of no way. This word was designed today to encourage you to not stop, to, to make sure that you don't stop believing your God. Because his word has not changed. His promises have not changed. Nothing, hear me now, hear me prophetically, nothing that he has said is delayed because there was a pandemic you didn't see. God knew what was coming when he spoke to you what he wants to do. So don't, don't allow other people who don't walk with your God tell you what your God can't do in the midst of difficult things. I'm telling you, this church has experienced nothing but the favor, the grace, the mercy, and the generosity of God in the midst of all of this that's going on. When other churches are closing, God said, this one's going to stay open. Not because I'm so wonderful, but y'all don't hear what I'm saying, but because we didn't get off of what he said. And I'm telling you, don't get off of what God promised you. You got to keep believing God. Why? And I'm going to say this last thing and be finished. Why do you have to keep believing God? Because the rain is coming. Do you hear me? The rain is coming. What God said is going to happen, it's going to happen. What God said is going to take place, it's going to take place. So you just keep that in your mind that the rain is coming. It's, it's going to happen just like he said it. But the issue is, will you be inside the boat that you built with faith during this time? Or will you drown because you allowed people to tell you to not believe God? Because the rain is still coming. The rain is still coming. What God said is going to happen is going to happen. But the issue is, do you get to be benefited by it? Do you get to receive it? If God told you that a house for you was coming this year, then it's going to come. It doesn't matter what everything else that happened. But when it comes, will you be able to receive it or will you miss it because you stopped walking with God and started walking with other people and you started to not believe what God said? I'm telling you, in the face of, of a pandemic, you still believe God. Why? Because it's still going to rain. This, this thing ain't over. God's still going to get the glory. This thing ain't over. God's still going to turn it around. God is a mender of hearts. He's a mender of relationships. He's a mender of marriages. He's a mender of your children. There is nothing that God cannot do, but it only stops for you if you stop believing him. But get it made up in your mind 
The rain is coming, so I will not stop believing God. I'll believe him when it looks bad. I'll believe him when it looks difficult. I'll believe him while people are laughing. I'll believe him when they're talking about me. I'll believe them because there's a day that the thing that he said is coming to pass. He told this church, you pray out on earth as it is in heaven. I ain't forgotten that I'm still praying because he's going to do what he said because the rain is coming. Oh, I feel God's presence. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. The rain is coming. And God's going to do exactly what he said. So don't be moved by naysayers, negative people. Don't be moved by people who don't believe God. You be moved by what did God tell you? What did he promise you? And you get it made up in your mind, God, I still believe you. Every person stand to your feet. And if you're watching us on social media, if you're able to stand, I want you to stand. Because we're going to pray a prayer of realignment. That we get our hearts and our faith back in the place where we are believing God. That we are willing to cut the ties to any person or thing that we're walking with that's not walking with God. Because you want to know what's at stake? Look up real quick. You want to know what's at stake? Your future is at stake. Your life is at stake. The destiny of your family is at stake. Well, if I cut ties with them, what they going to say? Who cares what they say? What is God saying? Well, if I stop going on Facebook, what they going to say? Trust me, they ain't going to miss you. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's not about others right now. Right now, it's about your destiny, and it's about what God promised you, and you not getting out of the box of what God said. Are you here? I, I got to say this thing real quick, because I want you to catch this. I'm going to say it real quick. God is our Jehovah, and he's also Jireh. It never calls him Jehovah Jireh. It calls him Jehovah, and he's the Jehovah of Jireh. Why? Because Jireh is a place. Jireh was the place of provision. Jireh was the place where God provided a ram in the bush for the sacrifice. It was a place. So every provision that Jehovah has for you is at the place he told you to be. Jireh was on top of a mountain where a sacrifice had to be made. God doesn't move Jireh to meet you. This is for somebody. Whether you're here or whether you're watching, God doesn't move the place of blessing to meet you. You got to move to the place of blessing he told you to be in. Because that's where it's at. So don't allow anyone, anything, any voice to move you out of the place where God told you to be or where God is telling you to go. And if they're not willing to go with you, then you cut the ties. If they're talking against your walk and your faith with God, you cut the ties. If they're not believing God like you, then you close your ears to it. Because I'm in a place where destiny is at stake. I'm in a place where my provision is at stake. I'm in a place where the history of my life and my family is at stake. And I cannot miss it because I'm afraid of hurting your feelings. your hands let's worship God I thank you for this word help us to make the adjustments and the pivots that are necessary so that we don't miss you because our life is at stake and the destiny of our family that's watching us is at stake so God help us to hear you we already know what it is you are telling us to do, what it is you are encouraging us to do, what it is that you have been gently beckoning 
for us to do. So God, we say to you right now in this moment that we repent for not responding to your voice because we allowed someone else's voice to be louder. We allowed the voices of the mob and the crowds to be more important than the voice of Almighty God. So God, we pray that as we have our hands and our lives and our hearts lifted up to you, that you see us and that you see this moment. And that, God, you forgive us as we repent. And, God, right now we make the pivot to say, God, now we're after you. Totally with everything we have, we are after you. With everything we got, we are after you. Because we still believe you, God. We still believe you. No matter how dark the day or the hour or the season, we still believe you. God, thank you right now for reigniting that dream, that vision, that purpose, that promise that you gave us. And God, right now, I pray for those under the sound of my voice that may not know you, that God, that as they are sending their heart and their hands to you, that you are not making it difficult, but in this moment, you are receiving them and you are saving them. Thank you, God, for salvation that's happening all across the world because of this moment. Thank you for your children coming back to you and the kingdom being increased because people today have decided to make a decision, to make a pivot, to believe you more than anything else. God, we praise you for this. We praise you that we'll never be the same because we encountered you today and we give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, let every glad heart shout amen. If you were blessed by this word today, put your hands together and thank God for the word that you heard today. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. incredible time. Thank you so much again for joining us here at CFFC. We always want to respond to the word of the Lord. So again, please be sure to send in your prayer requests and or praise reports and join our community prayer line every Saturday from 6.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. In addition to that, we'd love to further connect with you throughout the week. So if you haven't already, connect with a small group by visiting our website at cffc.org small groups. We can't wait to see you this week.